Okay, in this video we're going to refine the animation that we created for the bouncing ball. Using the techniques that you've learned so far with the animation curves and using the graph editor, we're going to actually make this look like a genuine, natural looking bounce. Well, maybe a cartoony looking bounce. Cartoony sounds great. Yeah, but it's going to be a little more bounce like than what we have now. So if I hit play right now and you take a look at this, we're kind of waving up and down. and it, Yeah, that's just lacking. It just doesn't look right. Right. So we need to get serious about adjusting the animation curves and make this look better. Before we do this, I want to take uh, my user interface and adjust it a little bit to make a, a more animation-friendly layout. Fortunately, over in my toolbox, I've got something that's going to help me out a lot with this, the Persp Graph Layout, available over to the left. Simply click on that, and we get our perspective window at the top, and we get our graph editor on the bottom. Now, that's cool. That is awesome. But what I actually want here, because we're going to be focusing mostly on the up and down bounce of this, is a side view. So here under my Panels menu, I'm going to come down to pers I'm sorry, Orthographic and choose the side view. Now, there's another slight problem. My timeline is going to be le uh, reading from left to right, and so my animation curves are going to be reading from left to right. But when I hit play, I'm going from right to left. Now, I can work that way, you can work that way, but it's just a little bit mentally confusing. Let's uh, make this as easy on ourselves as we can. I'm going to go under View. I'm going to come down to Predefined Bookmarks. This is where you can take uh, the, the current camera settings you have and adjust them slightly. So right now we're looking at a right side view. Let's switch over to a left side. It's still a side view. still says side down here at the bottom. But now we're moving from left to right across the screen. Very nice. It'll be Very a nice. whole lot easier to keep track of what we're doing. So now all i got to do is move the stool and the mic to where they're right about the bottom of the viewport, and I have a great view of exactly what's going on in my animation. And you can see just how bad our waving up and down is. <laughs> so now let's go ahead, rewind the animation, and we'll select our ball. We have two animated attributes here. First we have Translate Z, which I'll select and hit F so you can see the animation curve. It's a simple straight line, uh, two, uh, two keyframes, meaning constant forward progression. We don't need to change that at all. That is perfect. So let's go ahead and take a look at Translate Y. Hmm. Mm. I'll go ahead and hit F to get this all sized up nicely in our view. This is where all of the trouble is actually occurring. If we zoom in at any, any of the points where our ball is actually striking the ground, we get to actually see very well the nature of our problem. Our ball is moving down, and then it is decelerating. It is slowing down to a stop right before it hits the ground. Now, I've bounced all kinds of things off the <laughs> floor in my life. Yes, he has. Both intentionally and otherwise. Right. And you'll tend to notice that they accelerate right up to the point of impact. If you guys didn't hear me just hit my desk, that kind of hurt a little bit. <laughs> So it's that called gravity. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, gravity works. So we need to make sure that our curve keeps accelerating right up to the point of impact. In essence, what we need is our animation curve to come down to a point here instead of this nice lofty little curve at the bottom. There's all kinds of ways to solve this problem. I'm going to be showing you one possible way. Once you get in and start playing with animation curves on your own, if you want to handle it a different way, that's perfectly fine. That's right. So... Uh, let's go ahead and start simply. If you select the curve right now, you're probably going to notice that your tangents are not weighted. So uh, what I'm going to do is, first thing, just uh, when I'm working with curves, I love to use weighted tangents. So as soon as I come in here, I'm going to go to Curves and choose Weighted Tangents and just turn those on for the whole curve. Now, a really, really quick fix. If I just want to add points to the bottom of my curves, I can use some of my tangent types to my advantage. I can select all of my ground striking curves, uh, the three rounded ones here anyways, and just go ahead and hit the linear tangents button up here at the top. Straight in, straight out. Boom! And we get that. Now I have these points in my curve. If I zoom way in on one, you'll see we're coming straight in, bam, coming straight out. Looks better, and if I rewind, we can see it does look a little bit better in the animation. I mean, we're now a little bit more like we're bouncing. It's just... I don't know, it just doesn't look right. It, no. There's, n there's not much acceleration here. We're really, if you look at it, we're only accelerating for the first about frame and a half, and then we're moving at a constant rate toward the ground. Yeah. What we want is deceleration as we climb to kind of loft up to the top. Yeah, up at the apex, it's just going to kind of hang, and then gravity starts pulling gravity's it. gravity's going to pull it. It's going to accelerate, accelerate, get quicker and quicker right up to the point it hits the ground. Remember, when something's falling, it will accelerate until it either hits terminal velocity or it strikes something. That's right. So we don't have time for terminal velocity, so we'll accelerate right up to the point we smack the ground. So to do this, what I'm going to do is adjust my tangent handles independently. So I need to go ahead and break my tangent handles, as demonstrated uh, several videos ago. I'm going to go ahead and select all of my bottom most keyframes, and I'm going to go ahead and hit the Break Tangents button. 
And now, of course, we have the blue and red tangent handles. Let's go through, and I'm going to adjust all my out tangents on these first four keyframes all at once. To do this, you'll notice I'm going to go ahead and come through and select my first four keyframes. I'm going to hold down the Shift key, and I'm going to drag on all four of the right side tangent handles. Now, make sure you have your Move Tool active at this point. You can uh, get it over here out of the toolbox, or of course, hit the W key. And I'll just middle mouse drag here to the left, and you'll notice how this is changing my, uh, my curve a little bit, like so. So I'm kind of coming up off the ground a little more quickly. Now let's counter that by changing the, out, uh, the in tangent for each curve as well. So I'll hold down the Shift key. Now I'll go through and select. Well, let's go ahead and <laughs> I'll just reselect the curves. All right, got a little ahead of myself. That's fine. So I'll reselect the keyframes, like so. Now I'll hold down the Shift key, and I'll grab the blue tangent handles on each side. I don't need to grab this one because there's really no information over here. That's correct. So we'll just ignore that. In fact, I'll go ahead and hold down Control, and I'll deselect that keyframe. Now I'll move with the middle mouse button. I'll move this to the right this time. So if you if you take a look, I'm just really exaggerating these points here where we're striking the ground. And now if I rewind and hit play, you see I have a lot more of a, a solid bounce as we come up off the ground, looking a whole lot better by the moment. We still need to make a minor adjustment here where we hit the stool, so no problem. We'll select that key, grab the blue tangent handle, and just pull that up a little bit. Now we have a funny looking arc here uh, as we strike the stool. Don't worry about that. We'll be getting into that here in just a second. What I want to focus on now is making the ball kind of loft, kind of hang in the air as it's bouncing. I love dragging through this too. By the way, if you're trying to really get an idea of what your animation looks like, looks like I can speak, <laughs> don't be afraid to drag forward and back in your That's view because right. you get a really good idea of how the motion actually looks. So looking pretty good. I would like my ball to kind of hang a little longer as it bounces. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select my three keyframes where I'm up in the air. I'm not going to break the tangents, but I am going to free the tangent weights. So once I do that, I can now come in here and hold down the Shift key and select all of either the in or out tangents. It's irrelevant because they're not broken from each other. I'm going to hold down the Shift key. Remember, that's how we can constrain motion in a, to either left, right, or up and down. So hold down Shift. Middle mouse click on any one of these, and we get our question mark. I'm going to gesture very gently to the right. And you'll look at this. I'm adding weight to both sides of the keyframe. Look at my ball in the viewport. If you look real close, you'll notice it's actually mm -hmm. updating in real time. So I'm going to pull this out until I get these nice lofting kind of egg-shaped arcs on mm -hmm. my curve. Hit rewind. Check this out. Boing, boing, boing. You can almost hear the sound yeah. now. So you got this. Dum, dum, dum. Like he's just kind of hanging there in the air as he goes through. Very nice. I'm liking it. So really all we got to fix up is this one last bounce, which still looks a little bit funny. To do this, I'm going to start off in one simple area. I want to loft it very similar to what I did with these guys. The problem is you'll notice the tangent handle is kind of off to this funny angle. I don't want to have to deal with fixing that on my own. I'll let Maya do it for me. I can grab this keyframe and set it to a flat tangent. Boom. So that flattens it out. Now, I need more weight on it, just like I used before, so I'll free the tangent weight, no problem. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of weight, so I'll select one of the tangent handles and shift drag out, and it's looking pretty good, but if you look, it's just a little bit lopsided. Now, we set all of our keyframes on exact uh, midpoints, for example, like this was on 60, this was on 80, so therefore we set this guy right around 70. What I'm going to do is select the keyframe and actually move its timing, move it to the right, just one frame. Look at the difference. Now we have kind of a more natural uh, balance between these two points. The reason for that is we're not falling as far here. So now it's, uh, it's more like this curve is a little more balanced where we, you know, if we were falling all the way to the ground, we'd actually end a little further sure. out. So now if we rewind and hit play, boom. Nice. And he just pops right down on that stool. It's got a real kind of catchy bounce to it. Like he's really kind of coming across with some energy, almost like he's bouncing to music. Yeah. So really, with that, we have cleaned up our ball's bounce exactly the way we want it to. Go ahead and stop the animation, switch back to a full screen perspective view. Okay, I'll just go ahead and click the purse button over here inside the toolbox for a, a quick speed tip. And you can uh, deselect if you want, rewind, and take a look at what this looks like naturally. Very nice, very nice. And really, that's all I wanted to show you guys. Now, if you want to make a few variations on this, that's okay, but try to make your animations look as close to this as you can. Yep. And with that, make sure you save your scene now. So I'm going to hit Control-S. And that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.